Thank you, Mr. Degefer. Would you tell me about the last time you saw His Majesty, please? The last time I saw His Majesty is when uh, he was held by the Turk. And uh, we were with a group of military officers of Ethiopia who wanted to interview him. And um, there were uh, civilian, Ras Imru, his cousin. Yes. And uh, uh, a civilian uh, uh, investigator and the military people. And the discussion was where is the money that His Majesty owns abroad? And um, His Majesty did not reply at that point. And um, his cousin also asked. He said they have all the harm, they have everything under their control. They want you to give them the money. That's when his the emperor said, money. You said billion. Where would that come from? And why, if we had it, would keep it abroad? And uh, as for uh, the money that sold by my grandchildren. Haven't they rights? Aren't they Ethiopian? That's when the main comments on the money stopped. As the head of the Ethiopian bank, Mr. Degefe, you were aware of uh, whether His Majesty in fact had lots of money or not. Yeah. What is your view on that? His Majesty didn't even have a bank account in Ethiopia. He kept all cash because whatever money he had, he used to donate wherever he went on his travels. And uh, um, uh, 
to expect him to have a lot of money abroad when he has none at all. To me, it's, uh, it's uh, impossible. And uh, I told them that they wouldn't believe me. What, what, do you remember His Majesty's uh, response when he heard of the uh, the famine? Yes, well, he he said he gave uh, on his own what he had, and uh, everywhere we mobilized efforts to help the famine victims. And um, um, even now, everyone is contributing to the famine. Mr. Degeva, what would you like people to know about His Majesty, as the world to know, as a person who knew him personally? Well, he was uh, very patriotic. He loved his people. He loved the country. And um, to expect him to have had such a large sum abroad, it's unrealistic. After all, Ethiopia was a poor country. Where would he get all this money? And in fact, uh, after he died, there was never any mention of it anymore. So it was all aimed to upset him while he was uh, in detention. Mr. Degev, I don't want to tire you, but I remember you telling me a story once about when His Majesty called you when you were the head of the bank about a woman whose house was going to into foreclosure. Yeah. Would you mind retelling that story, if you can, please? Uh, that was many times. Whenever we had uh, auction or properties, I used to keep a list because I knew some of them might appeal to him. Then he would suddenly call me, and I would have my notes uh, with me, and I would explain how that loan arose, what we tried to help the, the borrower uh, to, to pay settled loan, and uh, our endeavor to auction it was stopped because they appealed to Your Majesty. The debtors appealed to His Majesty for help. Yeah. Yes. Please continue. And uh, so. Uh, he recognized the, the father who had died in the war or uh, any of the relative uh, which uh, the, the appellant had in mind. And um, sometimes he would turn to all the people who were claiming money how I explained that it was due to His Majesty's wishes that the bank functioned properly to help the people. So he has done his best. What do you want him to do? He used to say. And order his private treasurer to go and pay the debt. So His Majesty would order his own private treasurer to pay the debts of the people who couldn't pay their debts. Right. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. De Gefe. Thank you. I remember you telling me a story of um, when you yourself had some problems with your eyes and had to have surgery abroad. Yes, I was uh, flown urgently to Germany and uh, had uh, the operation of detached retina. Um, it was quite a costly operation because I had to stay in the clinic for a whole month. 
and I was when I returned home, uh, fully treated with new glasses and so on. I worried how I'm going, am I going to meet this debt because I had a mortgage, we had young children, and uh, I had just started a career of banking. And uh, suddenly, I, the governor of the bank told me his majesty has ordered the bank to pay the expenses for the treatment abroad, which was most unusual. And I was very grateful. Was that a typical gesture from His Majesty? A military junta comprising members of nominated from the ground forces, the air force, the police and the territorial army took over power of leadership by force and led the country to untold chaos. The Derg, as the military junta called itself, ousted the emperor from power. A squad of military personnel escorted by reporters was sent to the palace to read out the end of his reign to him. He was driven in a small Volkswagen sedan to the premises of the 4th Division, where he was imprisoned. Other government officials, including the former Prime Minister, Zahafi Tizazakludab told, were also kept behind bars, later to be inhumanly gunned down, without being tried and convicted for any crime they may have committed. The emperor was later moved to the Grand Palace and kept in a solitary confinement near the headquarters of the Derg. The army, which set off the present crisis with a mutiny that forced out the old prime minister. These are the moments when Ethiopia's kingdom came to an end. In February 1974, the Ethiopian military rose up in revolt. By September, they deposed the Emperor Haile Selassie. It was a coup that brought to an end one of the world's oldest continuous kingdoms. ...gave it its first written constitution. Realizing that times must change, he has decreed constitutional reforms be made, apparently with a view toward making Ethiopia a constitution... Haile Selassie was the last emperor of a dynasty that claimed it could trace its roots back thousands of years. What a tangled web we weave When first we practice to deceive Babylon must fall Babylon shall fall Babylon must fall Babylon shall fall You're searching for your children But for your works you pay You all got to pay Don't think the church is gonna save you They doing folly night and day They all got to pay Now that the world is in confusion Your leaders gone out to pay They think this is a game Judgment are gonna fall like a rain God, righteousness shall prevail But the Empress say righteous prevail Mama Dan must fail, yo Me no beg no friend for me then Try the devil guide and lead them Hold up me head when me see them I can be me why lead them When righteousness gonna lead them Lies and deceit shall feed them They not the bottomless pit Satan shall lead them They won't hide up when me see them Smile up in my face and I pretend Like me no know what them thinking Is them one grave them digging Said I love it for them seeking That's why them ship is sinking But we won't fall off with them teaching No I'm gonna see no 
justice is only just us. We have no unity because we don't trust us. Instead of living love, we rather fight us. And that's how Babylon get to live amongst us. Them come at this, this. Them come at us, us. I mean, I want them fish, fish. I mean, I want them duck, duck. I mean, I want them bling, bling. It's not a must. Cause when them dead and gone, it only end up in a dust, dust. Hey. But for your work to pay, you all got to pay. Don't think the church is gonna save you. They do it for the night and day. And now that the world is in confusion, your leaders gone out to play. They think this is our game. Judgment of a